All right, so we are finally taking Rowan home. Little Row. Here she is. She's been a little fussy, but it's all good. Um, I'm just going downstairs right now to get the car. Sorry, I did not vlog this entire time, but I was just kind of enjoying the whole motherhood experience. So, yeah. But all the nurses here at the hospital have been great. And we're just ready to go home and introduce our little girl to her new home, her new address. It's so weird because she is not going anywhere. She's really coming with us. Yeah. So, as you know, I still have my boot on. So, I'll be carrying, being wheeled out with my boot and this baby. So, isn't she cute? Say hey, Rowan. Hey. She can like barely open her eyes here. So yeah guys, I just wanted to keep everyone posted. Family and friends. I know I haven't been that uh, much responding to everyone. Of course, it's understandable. I've been in the hospital for two days. Um, getting adjusted to a new baby and a new schedule and everything like that. But just wanted to bring you on this journey. Um, I'll probably do a follow-up video to let everyone know how my experience went with labor and delivery but yeah hey guys and welcome back to my channel this is your girl sam marshall and by the title you can tell that i already have my little baby girl rowan lee she is now three weeks and man time flies she went from like this itty bitty little thing weighing seven pounds 14 ounces and now she's almost nine pounds in the short time period of three weeks so i'm just so happy that she is healthy and she's here we didn't have any major issues during our labor process and delivery process the doctors and nurses were all great so i just want to go ahead and share with you some things that happened that were funny and not so funny all right so let's just go ahead and get right into my labor and delivery story all right so um rowan was born on her actual due date on 7-9, which is so rare. It's just ridiculous, it's so rare. So she was born on time, on her due date, 7-9, so that was great. Sunday morning, which was 7-9, um, about one o'clock in the morning, I started really feeling, you know, my stomach contracting. So it felt like a really bad um, menstrual cycle cramp. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm like telling myself, she cannot be coming on her due date. It, this is just, you know mild cramps it'll go away just like Braxton Hicks well lo and behold it was not Braxton Hicks and I started getting my contractions started intensifying every two to three minutes so I was like, okay what's going on what's going on so I continue to labor at home when I mean labor just kind of go through the contraction sorry go through the contractions so I'll just monitor them so there's this app that I have that I was monitoring um, my contractions on the app and I'll go ahead and show the app right here so you can kind of see it if you are you know close to your due date and you want to go ahead and monitor your um, contractions so um my contractions were first they were four to five minutes apart and then they start intensifying they became two to three minutes apart so i labored from like 1 a.m to about 3 45 ish in the morning so finally i told dashi i was like wait a second this is unbearable I could barely talk so he ended up calling the doctor's office the after hours line got the doctor on the line the doctor said go ahead go to the um, hospital get checked in you may be having this baby today and I was like oh my god so we're driving to the hospital and literally my contractions are just so unbearable I am like oh my god it basically felt like a really strong menstrual cramp that you can't go to work and you're like on your back and there's nothing you can take or do Motrin won't even work it was that intense like very intense like I felt like I wanted to climb walls that's how intense it was but I don't mean to scare you but that's just my experience like I am NOT equipped for pain at all I'm just telling you my story and how I felt it just felt really bad literally it felt like my toe hurt too when I broke my toe if you looked at my previous video I broke my toe a week before I delivered but it felt worse than breaking my toe, which was really painful. To the hospital, we checked in and literally it must have been a full moon because there were about five or six women waiting to be checked in to have their baby on the same day. And I'm like, what is going on? So I'm sitting 
in a wheelchair just like moaning and groaning waiting to be seen and there was a gentleman there with his wife they were on their fourth baby and they were talking to dashi and they're like yeah this is just a routine she's breathing through her contractions i am not breathing through my contractions i'm just like please give me a room please give me a room but anyway everybody's story is different she's a veteran um a neo in this whole labor delivery thing finally got checked into a room um the nurse came in checked me at about four ish I want to say I can't remember because everything was kind of a blur with me being in pain but about four-ish and she goes you're only one centimeter dilated so I was literally only one centimeter dilated when I got there around close to five o'clock in the morning and the pain was so unbearable I told the nurse hey can you give me something for this pain I cannot bear it and she goes well you're not that far along dilated so we're gonna go ahead and give you morphine through a drip and I was like perfect so once I got the morphine my contractions were much more bearable. I could sleep through the morning, which was good because that whole night, well, that whole early morning, I wasn't able to sleep because I was trying to bear through the pain. And the morphine was like my best friend. Like literally, I was able to sleep for a good two to three hours before my midwife came in to kind of give me an update on what to expect next. So, so after the morphine started wearing off, I told my midwife, I want an epidural. That is my birth plan. I want an epidural. Give me an epidural. And she checked me again, and I was still only one centimeter dilated at close to 6 o'clock in the morning, going on 6, 6.30 in the morning. So she goes, you're only one centimeter dilated. You cannot do an epidural, but the doctor should be in. He's going to check you to see how far you're dilated within an hour. So the doctor did that, and at that point I was about four centimeters dilated, so this is within an hour time frame. So I went from one to four like in an hour, and that's pretty quick to get dilated from one to four. So I was like, okay, let's do this. So finally the doctor administered the epidural, but he didn't want Dashi to see him administer the epidural because he said most big guys, my husband's huge, he's like 6'2", most big guys normally fall out when they see their wives or significant others getting a decatheter up their back because when you get an epidural they put a decatheter up your back kind of like a spinal tap in a sense to put the medication in there in order to soothe your pain so he had to again Dashi had to come around the front to kind of watch me from the front versus looking in the back because I didn't want him to fall out and have his baby I don't want to have the baby myself so he literally came in the front so after that I got the epidural I was in happy land so excited to have had the epidural i was like yes this is what i needed and after that i could do anything like i was talking to folks i was making jokes the nurses came in we were chopping it up i was like can you please give me some ice they're like you literally cannot have anything so it's about nine o'clock in the morning i wasn't able to eat or anything because once you get checked into the hospital and you're about to have a baby they're like you can't have anything to drink or um anything to eat and i already knew that but at that point in time, I was just so hungry. I, I, I was like, come on, let's just get through this. I'm ready to have this baby so I can go ahead and eat. And that is all, was, that is the only thing that was on my mind. I was ready to eat. Really, after I got the um, epidural, the midwife came in to check me again about, mm, I think it was like early afternoon. It was probably close to one o'clock. And she said, you are about eight centimeters dilated. So I went from, early morning from one centimeter dilated all the way to eight centimeters dilated close to early afternoon and I was just like wow I didn't have to get up and walk around you know to make sure that you know I can expand on being kind of dilated it naturally happened for me after I was about eight centimeters dilated the midwife came back she goes I'm gonna go ahead and take care of another patient I'm then gonna come back to you and we're gonna do a practice push and I was like a practice push in my mind. I'm like, what the heck is a practice push? So literally she came back an hour later. It's about two-ish. She came back and no, no, it's about close to two. It's like like 145-ish. She came back and she goes, all right, we're going to do a practice push. So she goes, Dashi, dad, come here and hold her leg. And literally Dashi was like, wait a second, I didn't sign up for this. I want to be at the top of the bed, not the end of the bed. Because my husband gets so like weirded out with like blood in my things so literally he was participating in this labor and delivery and he was like my football coach like literally he had my knee back and he was like come on babe we can do it and he's like coaching me through the whole thing and I'm like okay I don't need the theatrics right now like just relax let me do my thing <laughs> but 
it was very helpful. I was so happy that he was able to experience that because most men would have been like, nah, I'm good. Let me just hold your hand and be the support up here. But he was really in, into it. Like he push was like, one, two, three, push. And I just bared down to push. Nothing happened, of course. So then um, we did that a couple more times and I was getting used to the rhythm of just pushing because of course, I've never done this before. So just getting into the rhythm of pushing and I did that. And then an hour later, Rowan's head starts to peek out and the nurse, the midwife, not the nurse, the midwife, she goes, man, she's got a lot of hair. And in the middle of her saying, man, she's got a lot of hair, my midwife, bless her heart, left her death. She started making a mohawk out of Rowan's hair in my JJ, which was very interesting. So everybody started laughing and giggling and kikiing. And you know, I'm not kikiing at this point. I'm like, let's just get this baby out. So they started making little mohawks or whatever, and I'm just like, okay, this is my, you know, this is the baby and my little virgin. Why are you making fun of this right now? Like, we are at the tail end, let's just get this baby out. But I guess she was trying to ease the mood because, you know, when you're going through labor, it, it's a little stressful. I mean, for me, all I kept thinking about was food. And I was like, okay, let me just do the best I can food and so I won't tear. I was like, please Sandra, do not tear. Let me just go easy with this. Don't rush anything. Just take your time, which I did. I did tear though. So I'll get into that. So anyway, so Rowan's head's coming out and then Dashi was like, come on, babe, you can do it. She's almost there. And she just easily came out after about an hour and a half of me pushing. I teared a little bit, but it wasn't bad. It was like one stitch, which was awesome. I mean, some women, you know, kind of get ripped from like delivering, but her, she came out really easy and she once she came out she like did the first cry and I was like oh my god and I started crying and then Dashi got emotional he started crying and they put her on my chest and I was just like in love like in love I started crying and in my mind I'm like god like how did I do this because in like, you know, getting pregnant is one thing, but delivering a baby is a whole nother thing. And it was just such an emotional experience for me. I can't explain it to, I can't explain it because it's just like a, a feeling like a euphoria. Like you just, it takes you away and you just hold on to that baby because this is yours. So I was just so happy and excited about delivering and seeing little Rowan because, you know, sonograms are one thing, but to actually see her in person and see her little smile and see the little features of, me and her dad and it was just like no other so before she came out there's one little thing she actually pooped while she was um, in utero so there was a special team that actually came in to clean her up really quickly before they could um lay her on my chest because it was because when babies poop in utero it can be a little toxic to them so you have the doctors and nurse midwives have to get the baby out as soon as possible but she kind of gradually came out before it got to that point so yeah, so that was that. But other than that, she was pretty much healthy. She cried like she needed to. She even pooped a little bit outside, which is good. One thing I was nervous about when pushing and um, pushing growing out is that I was gonna poop, but I did not poop. Thank God, I did not poop. Um, some women do. I mean, I know I'm being a little bit too graphic right now, but some women do, and it's a natural thing. And I didn't care at that point. I was like, whatever goes down goes down I just want to get this baby out so she yeah, can be so home. that is my labor and delivery story it was pretty easy in a sense I mean I went and had contractions started going into labor with the contractions I dilated um, within a short period of time my uh, labor whole labor and delivery process was about 14 15 hours I mean some women go 20 something hours being in labor mine's went pretty smooth so it was cool. I mean, and one bonus thing for me is that one of my best friends, who was who we had dinner with the night before, she was in town and she was able to see little Rowan before she caught her flight back home. So that was pretty cool. Thanks, Snaps, for coming to the hospital. Thanks, Richard, for bringing her. So yeah, so it was very sweet. I was gonna film my labor and delivery story, but to be honest with you, man, I was so tired and exhausted, like. Like, I was gonna vlog, I was like, I had this whole thing on mine. I'm gonna go ahead and vlog, this is a special moment, but honey, listen, when I went into labor, I wasn't thinking about a camera, I wasn't thinking about 
anything. I was like, let's just get this baby you out. Just go to my Instagram. It's the Sand Marshall. If you want to go see the most recent updated photos of little baby Rowan, she's so cute. She has chubby cheeks like me, um, which I adore. Just her father's eyes, which are little almond eyes. I don't have that. My eyes are just big, but whatever. But yeah, guys, thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to give you more mommy updates and mommy videos, and also some hair tutorial videos. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.